This video will serve as an introduction to operational amplifiers, or op amps for short. The circuit symbol for an op amp is a triangle with a plus and a minus inside of it. Those indicate the inputs to the op amp, which we label V minus and V plus. The op amp has an output voltage, V out. It also has a power supply that requires both positive and negative voltages, Vs plus and Vs minus. Although those, are, although those are usually not drawn, so we usually omit those. You still need to remember to connect them when you were using an op amp in lab. We, we usually only draw the input and output voltages because for an ideal op amp, those power supply voltages do not enter into the equations that determines the output voltage. You have to be careful depending on what source you are using because sometimes the input and output voltages are flipped. So you will have the plus on the top and the minus on the bottom. So all the math is still the same. The physical location of these things doesn't matter. It's just how you're drawing it. Here you need to be careful again depending on what source you're using. So if you use Wikipedia to look up diagrams, it is usually going to have this convention. If you are using the Rizzoni textbook that is listed in the syllabus, it's going to have this convention. So again, I'm going to stick with the convention on the top there for lecture because that's consistent with the textbook on which it is based. But if you are looking up other things online, just be careful that you get your circuit diagrams flipped upside down if they have those plus and minus signs switched. The equation that governs the behavior of an op amp is V out equals A times V plus minus V minus, where A is our gain. And for an ideal op amp, we can make several assumptions about its behavior. So for now, we're only going to talk about ideal op amps. We'll talk about practical op amps a little later in lecture. So for an ideal op amp, we can make these assumptions. One is that the gain is infinity. Another is that the inputs draw no current. So I plus equals I minus equals zero. And those two assumptions are always true for an ideal op amp. There is a third assumption that the two input voltages are equal. So the op amp has some internal circuitry that does whatever it can to make sure those two voltages equal each other. Okay, and that might seem a little counterintuitive based on the drawing I've shown so far. You might ask what happens if you just apply two different voltages to those inputs. And we will talk about that in lecture. But in general, this is only true in op amp circuits with negative feedback. And what we mean by negative feedback is we have something, I don't necessarily care what, it could be a wire, it could be a capacitor, it could be a resistor, we'll talk about more examples, connected between that output and the negative or inverting input terminal. Okay, so this assumption that V plus equals V minus is only true in this case where I have that negative feedback. It is not true in this case, where there's no wire going back connecting the output to the input, okay? These three assumptions, when combined, can lead to some interesting behavior from op amps and allow us to design some useful circuits. For example, we have an op amp, our output voltage will be out over here, negative feedback going back to the inverting or negative input. And we have a voltage supply Vn connected to the positive or non-inverting input. And let's look at our equations and what we know based on what we just said about our ideal op amp assumptions. So first we have Vn is just connected directly to the plus input. So that gives us V plus 
has to be equal to Vn. We have negative feedback, so we know our third assumption that V plus equals V minus is going to be true. So we know the voltage here has to be equal to the voltage there. So we also have V minus equals V plus. And then we have just a wire going directly over from V minus to V out. So V out has to equal V minus. So what that tells us then is just that V out equals V in. It's just a bunch of things that are equal to each other. That might seem kind of silly, but what's interesting is if we attach a load resistor, so what happens if I attach a resistor between RL and ground? That resistor does not affect any of these equations. Everything I just wrote here is still true. Okay, so I still have V plus is equal to V in. I still have negative feedback, so I can still make my ideal op amp assumption that V minus is equal to V plus, and then I still have just a wire going directly from V minus over to V out. So V out is still equal to V in. It doesn't matter that I added a resistor here, and the value of this resistor doesn't matter. I can make this resistor whatever I want. V out is still equal to V in. So adding a load did not change that voltage. Similarly, if we put a resistor in series with that input voltage source, plus, minus, we have our output voltage. Remember, one of our ideal op-amp assumptions is that our inputs draw no current. So I plus equals zero, and that is always true no matter what. It does not matter if I increase the value of that resistor. If R gets bigger or R gets smaller, you might think, oh, I'm going to apply Ohm's law, and that's going to change the value of this current, but in this case, you don't. You're the op amp, you always know that the current into that input is zero. Even if there's no resistor there, even if there's a very large resistor there, the value of this current doesn't change. It's still just zero. Again, that might seem kind of strange that the op amp has these weird properties, but what we'll be seeing in lecture is how you can then use op amps to do useful things in circuits.